<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to MK Sports Cars. We're back in the workshop. Well, we've had Halloween and we've had our fireworks. We've had plenty of fireworks going in the workshop with the tools. And what are we on with next? We're on with this. The next one uh, here in the installment of a demo car, another demo car that we're going to be working on, which is an RX-5. This is going to be a stock engine one and uh, really doing it to a similar spec to what you'd build at home. Nothing fancy, nothing bells and whistles and everything else. Basically a standard RX-5, what we call the basic kit that we'd build at home. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing super duper special because it's all good out of the box, a bit like this one here. This one's done, you know, it's all great. You say standard, but it's not standard. It's high enough spec in standard spec. So what we've been on with, chassis has been made, and we've got the floor pans in, the pedal box in, the brake lines in. Now, that sounds all very quick to say and simple, but it is really. You've got a nice billet pedal box, which you've seen before, and very easy to install. It's a few bolts to bolt it down in there, which is on the master cylinders here. And we've got different master cylinder sizes, so depending where you're running it. So front one, this is the front one here. Normally we run, uh, it's 0 0.7 on there, and then 0.75 on the rear, so 0 0.7, 0 0.75, and a 0.625 for the clutch, if you're doing a Mazda. There is different variations on these master cylinders, depending on the brake set you're running, what engines, what clutch arrangements, and things like that, so it's boosters and all of those. Things. But generally, that's the sort of standard setup that we do. So if you're out there and you're doing it and you're getting to that stage that you're gonna fit them, that's what you do. And you follow the brake lines round, it was pretty much in the manual how they install using these copper lines and also the copper lines for the fuel lines. You've got to fuel in and return in and the brake T-switch at the front. Now, I don't mean to harp on about this all the time. IVA stuff, it's boring, I know, but you have to take the exercise, making sure that you have 300 mil separation between the fixing points and none of it is contacting the chassis. Now, if you can do that, it's pretty much, you know that you're gonna be in control. So that's a good measurement. You don't need to get a tape measure out. It's a good fixing point. And some of them are closer than that, some of them further, but maximum is 300 mil. We've got our Brady lines in here, which are gonna go out to our calipers on here. And then we've got the front end chassis, which will have all the rockers. Now the bodywork panels on here are mock-up panels we're doing. Um, we're gonna be fixing all these in, and I think we're gonna wrap this car. We've not done one before, so we're gonna wrap it. Don't know what color yet. Make a choice, Lewis is there, behind the camera. Guess what his job is? <laughs> yeah, it's not mine. <laughs> Wrapping the car. <laughs> <laughs> so <Fun>. good luck. <laughs> he didn't know that. Look, he didn't know that behind the camera, but he is. No, him and Andy, they're gonna have a go, I think, and, and try it. So we thought we'd have a go. And then we can come back and give you some feedback really on how easy or it isn't to do, because I don't know. Do you get feedback on it? Do you see that anywhere? I know you anamize and all that, and the professionals do it and charge you probably tens of thousands of pounds. But do you know what? We thought we'd give it a go here. Can you do it at home in the workshop or whatever with basic tools and someone with, I want to say, basic skill sets that have never done it? So we're going to give it a go and we we'll give it a feedback on that as we go through it. So floor pans are in. Uh, there's a digital bar in here on this particular one for a six point harness. Because this particular car, we're going to build in a way that we can chuck you the key. So if you come down here as a customer, and you want to go out for a test drive we won't be coming with you or supporting you in any way as long as you meet the age criteria which is and and your license is clean enough to do it probably <laughs> uh, the age criteria unfortunately is a minimum age that we can do our policies and when you come down and have a chat we can talk you through that then we can check your keys and you can take it out which is what the whole idea and experience is for it but also we're looking to possibly enter this in a couple of race meetings it's possibly on the agenda as well to see how a standard rx5 mc uh, 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 Standard RX-5 
140, 150 weight, depending on what he makes, somewhere around there, will do in competition. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. So got all of that in, that's going to be going, and then, you know, we'll be hustling through the build. It is going to have an FIA roll cage on this, so we're going to put a roll cage on this as well. So it'll be something a bit different. So we'll follow this little blog, really. We've done a couple of Mazda builds where we followed it in a bit more detail. Um, so we won't go into massive detail on everything, but we'll show you the basics of where we fit, like the fuel lines you can see in here. They're all in with double P-clips on this particular one, and all within that, there you go, 300 mil, 300 mil, 300 mil, 300 mil, sort of thing. So that's where we're at with this particular one, but follow this, the RX-5, it's going to be a demo car. Um, I can't, do you know what? It's going to fly through, we hope, on this particular one. We've got all the engine and bits stripped on this. So actually, let's head over there and see what it have been up to on that. Right, so here we are. Demonstrate your engine. Now, we had a donor car. We stripped the donor car. This is nothing that you can't do at home. We're sort of basic tools um, to do. We didn't do it in anything special in any way, really. But stripping the donor components out, which is engine, gearbox, diff, uh, all the wiring loom, the clocks, and uh, all the, the other bits and etc. So we've got a list online. And then Joe's just sitting about. We thought we'd check some of the issues that can be done with these, which was the valves and check the valve clearances. We found the valve clearances weren't the best. Joseph found that. Everything else, pistons and bores and that. So we're honing good marks on it. We wouldn't normally strip right into these engines, but the process wasn't going to be that if we found no issues. Compression was good, but then we checked with the valve clearances. We found that. So what we're going to be doing now do the valves, which Joseph's on here actually. He's doing that right now. Uh, doing those, shimming the valves, and um, basically, he's got his little tools out, lapping the valves in. Here we go. I'm not doing it, look. Here we go. Say, lap the valves in, guys. Did you know that? You probably know that. But anyway, lapping the valves in there, and he's got everything out on the bench, getting that all nicely done and shimmed up accordingly. And then we're putting a new timing belt on it. So it's a new water pump at the same time, which we've got down here ready to go on. And we are going to shim the oil pump to give it a little bit more oil pressure. But that's just a little shim that goes behind. So when you're in there, you might as well do these things. If you're taking your donor engine out and you know it's all good, putting it straight in, it's fine. This one, we want to make it as reliable as we can. New clutch, and it's going to have a new light and flywheel on it. We've got a new 4.9 kilo flywheel on it, new clutch on it as well. So this thing and a new sump, because we'll chop the sump as well. Um, on them it does give you a bit more ground clearance we'll chop the sump and put that in so this has now been sort of fettled cleaned up it will be got to do the rocker cover we'll clean all the rocker cover up new head gasket in should be good to go so it should be refreshed it's a light refresh i'm going to call it a light refresh nothing major that we're going through but all the right bits on it new seals new gaskets where required um all of that and same with the gearbox the gearbox has been done i think that's over it's over the back now lewis look come on Hustle, Lewis, hustle, hustle, hustle. Look, we're here. There it is, gearbox is here, over here, because this is the bay that is being built in. So the gearbox has been refreshed. And again, it's nothing you couldn't do at home um, with your basic tools. So, you know, all we did was power wash this off. Uh, we checked the oils that come out, it's fine. We're going to put a new seal in the back, new front seal. Um, and then it was primed and it's in, in the silver primer paint here. It looks really smart. I think it's come out really well. It's clean, and then you can see when it goes into the vehicle, it's going to look nice, clean, and tidy. So nothing that couldn't be done at home. Really basic, simple tools to do it as well, and you can achieve a pretty good finish, actually. So that's the gearbox for it as well. So engine's out, engine's being prepped, gearbox has been done, and then there's a few other jobs which we'll talk for on the next video, maybe, which is like front and rear uprights and braking system as well. We'll get all of those and show you what we do with those and how we prep them. As well it's hard to show you every minute of what we do on a prep but we do as best as we can for you guys so if you're looking to get into a project and you're thinking oh that's a bit of me i'd like to build a mazda base kit or even a booster base kit or dura power base kit you know what to do hook us up phone call and email and you can turn one of these which is a base chassis into one of these which is a ready road going car now this one's in uh this is going to be doing some iva stuff we've got a little bit to do on this for IVA stuff but it's pretty much going to end up that is going to look this but with a cage so dashboard clocks body panels all of that difference is, is this one's got the original bodywork on it which has non-molded uh, rear arches whereas the new stuff is all molded in arches so but yeah and this has even got the stock man's the wheels on it which well, don't look too bad once they're painted up actually they look they look fine clean the tires up you know 
you can make them look respectable without having to spend an absolute fortune. You know, that's that's the goal of the Mazda, the ethos of the Mazda is keeping them to an affordable build at home and you can have fast fun. If we can get 150 horsepower, which is our target for this, and 650 kilos, that's 238 horsepower per tonne. What's not to like? Well, that's it for this week, guys. Remember to like, share and subscribe. And guess what? Yes, I will catch you next week.